Hey players, Rick here with Game Trade Media from Gen Con 2018. I've got James from Cheap Ass Games. Here Hello. Today. Thank you for joining us, James. Thanks for having me. So you brought some stuff to show I us? I brought some stuff. A lot of the yeah. stuff I didn't bring because no? I'm terrible, but I brought, the, I brought the good stuff. You brought the good stuff. And we can imagine the other stuff. Well, I know uh, Dr. Lucky has been lucky lately and is on some wild adventures. We've been Where killing it with Dr. Lucky <laughs> for 20 years now. Right. Uh, and this year we're doing The Island of Dr. Lucky, which is a standalone okay. new version of, of the Kill Dr. Lucky game. Okay. So tell us a little well, bit about it. Break it out. Let's, so let's take a look. You know, the, uh, the it's, it's, it's a most dangerous game. The, the idea here is that we're all trying to kill Dr. Lucky on his island and his island is trying to kill us at the same time so what that really means is that there are cards we can throw at each other okay that are the hazards that live around the island um, this is a new kind of card we've got your weapon cards which are pretty familiar from the old version of the game mm -hmm. we've got hazard cards which are new and then we've got good old failure cards which is how <coughs> dr lucky gets most of his luck Okay. If you know the 19 and a half anniversary of the game yes uh, you're familiar with the mechanic where luck is actually on most of the cards. So when someone tries to kill Dr. Lucky, it's everybody else's responsibility to play that luck and keep him alive. And that's right. how he gets his luck, and that's how he stays alive. I keep him alive when you try to kill him. Right, of course. So I can try to kill him. Of course. Uh, and that will obviously eventually happen. The weapons help you attack him better, and the hazards... Uh, you can actually throw at anybody. So I can throw mm -hmm. at Dr. Lucky, I can throw at somebody else. They have to be alone on a particular kind of space. So this is the mountain cat. You throw it at somebody who's standing on one of the mountain areas. Okay. And they either have to, to discard luck to cancel out this number two here, okay. or they have to pass you a card. Okay. And, and under the general rules of this game, if they're out of cards, then they don't have to do anything. Okay. But under the cutthroat rules, if they're out of cards, then they die. Then they're out of the game. Wow. So that's just an <coughs> option that's in the rule book. If you want to play hardcore, you can do that. That, that does sound pretty hardcore. <laughs> we, we made a, uh, a slight change to the color of the pawns in this edition. We made some nice, uh, you can see them there. Uh, I'm finally pulling out the, the brightly colored ones. There we go. Yeah, they look great. It looks like a handful of Skittles. Oh, and we yeah. also have we have a natural <laughs> colored Dr. Lucky because he's in his pith helmet and 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 uh, hunting costume in this. And so All we right. replaced the white cat with a black cat. This is a black panther mm -hmm. uh, named Ragu who lives on the island. And, and when you're in a space with Ragu, you can't see out of the space. Oh, wow. Because he's very distracting. Of course. The cat in the mansion has the same rules because the cat is cute. This cat is just dangerous as heck. So right. you don't want to look out when he's there. So okay. the way you use the cat, and the cat is a, is a part of all of the game now. It's not optional. The way you use it is if you've got a bunch of people who can see into the room with you, you can't kill Dr. Lucky. But if you put the cat in there with them, now they can't, they can't right. look at you. Pretty simple. Uh, Dr. Lucky is a fairly familiar game, but you know he's going to chase you around right. the island. You can stand in front of him to get an extra turn, mm -hmm. uh, wait wait where you want to be with him all the weapons are better in a specific location so sure. if i wanted to kill him with the uh with the pack of smokes good good call uh it's worth more in desperation bluff i want to get dr lucky alone in desperation bluff mm -hmm. hit him with a pack of smokes and then it's worth four points instead of one nice anyway that's yeah. and one good thing too is if you're here at gen con and are seeing this and you stop by your booth which is 1843, 1853. I don't know. It's the very end, end of, of 18. 18. Yeah. Uh, it's right across from Exhibitor Services and right behind Slugfest Games. And you can get uh, a, a picture with Dr. Lucky himself. Yes. And uh, DJ Becker is here in his Dr. Lucky costume, and we have a backdrop that's basically the, the cover, mm -hmm. the, por the postcard of the cover of the, of the game, so you right. can stand there and we have... A tentacle you can kill him with. We've got we've got the the big stuffed cat. We've got a whole bunch of other uh, uh, murder a, weapons. A horn. We've got the clown uh, horn. We've got uh, snake. A the cobra. Bad dates. Bad dates. My wife uh, took this bowl of dates and covered it in candy so mm -hmm. nobody could steal them. Right. <laughs> so we have a solid bowl of dates oh that you can God. attack him with. But it's a great photo op. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's that's lots of fun. And if you get the photo, uh, and as long as there's some of these left, yeah, we have a big box of lays. So you're gonna get laid. Come and come and get them while you can. <laughs> so what else did you bring to show us today? Let's see. The next thing in my stack of goodies, and is they are amazing goodies, by the way, everybody. The Sailor Moon Crystal Dice Challenge. Okay. Um, if you know the game Button Men. This is that game, okay. but with a Sailor Moon license. And I'm showing it off, although it's not our publication. Okay. Um, this, is, this comes out from Discami Games. Uh, Mark McKinnon's in charge of that. He doesn't have a booth here, so we are selling it. 
Okay. Um, but it's it's Button Man with Sailor Moon characters. They've got nice. characters on cards. This is pretty much what we did with the last edition of Button Man 2. Um, oh, no. Dice. Dice. Oh, no. <laughs> we put the characters on on cards like this. So there's... There's a few of them. Nice. And, then, yeah, and you know the game Button Men. Yeah. We, when we play this game, there, there's special abilities on all the cards. They're listed in the rule book. Um, and they give each character like mm. one thing they can do once per battle. Right. A really strong ability that you have to sort of track that you've used it. But the basic mechanic is you start with the, f the four red dice on the card. And I think the colors don't actually are not relevant. So you just start with these four, four dice. So you would right. take a four. Or a six, a 12, and, and a 20. Six. A 12 and a 20. Yeah. And I would, if I played this character, well, I start with a 1 and a 2. i got to read this thing because that's, that's bizarre. Okay. There's no 1 and 2 in here, but I'll use these. The green is my mm. 1. When you lose a round, mm -hmm. you get to pull one of your reserve dice into your pool. Okay. So we're still playing best 3 out of 5, and every time you lose, your character gets a little bigger. Okay. It's very constructed. To basically always last for five rounds. Okay. But you're still using your strategy uh, and, you know, basic button men play to play right. the game. I'm not going to use this character because he's got to have an ability that I don't know. So let me try this. I'll do Tuxedo Mask instead. Wait, uh, that's not Tuxedo Mask. That's King. That's King and Endymion. I'm, I'm perfect for this because I have never pronounced these names before in my life. Okay. 610 six, ten, and 220s. And 220s. Let's play around a button men. Wow, that wasn't a one, but then you knocked it to a one, so I'm going to take it. All right. All right, so I have all the ones. I got to go first. The lowest single number gets to go first. Okay, I only have a one one. We're going to take turns capturing each other's dice. Mm -hmm. Bigger dice are worth more points. Uh, so I, I'm going to use, I'm going to capture your 20-sider with a one on it. All right. And I'm going to use my 20-sider to do that, and I re-roll the die that I attacked with. So that turns into a gigantic four. All right, <coughs> so I am going to use... Uh, the two to capture your ten. I, I'd recommend another move because you've also got a skill attack there. You can do two plus two. If it adds up exactly to four, then you can oh. re-roll both of those dice and get my bigger oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then I will do that, and then I get to re-roll. That's All six right. and a two. So I've got two dice that are showing one, and I don't want to roll my 19 until I have to, so I'm going to do one plus one takes two and just get your four-sided die. Oh, uh. All right, and All then. Right. Okay, so I'm going to do four on the one. Yeah, four takes one. That's fine. Yeah. Oop, that okay, was, that a was a six. Yep, a six. Um, I'm going to do six takes six, so that was a six. I'm taking it. Six takes six. Curses. You're only attacking <laughs> six takes one, and then whatever you roll, I'm taking it with this. Yeah. And your score is the size of the dice that you took plus half of the size of the dice that you kept. So I would get 10 points for this. Right. I would get the number of sides over here. Um, and it looks like I'm ahead. So you, having yeah. lost the round, you could pull one of these okay. into your list. And now you've got five dice to my four, and we play another round. Wow. That's, that's yeah. Button Men. Yeah. Um, and this game is new at the show, or very recently new at the show. Okay. Uh, we also have a Button Men game that, we, that you and I have played yeah, before. We have played that's that's the, the, the Fight City set. Right. The Button Men Beat People Up is what it's called. And that one's very similar to this. It has uh, a lot of dice, mm -hmm. and it's got 48 characters that are, are all playable with several different abilities right. inside that. All new art, all new uh, uh, recipes and stuff in that box. Nice. And what I also didn't bring to show mm. you is our next Button Men set, which is called Button Men Originals. Okay. And that just comes in a card pack. That's okay. just a, a pack of 50 cards, and it's called Originals because it is many of our old sets. Okay. All changed into this trading card game format. So it's got the basic rules and then any ad extra rules you need for each character is on the back of each card. Okay. Um, so it's got the soldier set, which is the very first set with Avis and Hammer and Bauer and Stark and all those crazy characters. The vampire set, the Brom set, the, uh, the fantasy set that was uh, illustrated by Larry Elmore. Right. Uh, our, um, our samurai set with focus dice. And it's also got a few teasers that are extra cards for the core set. It's, it's, it's a lot of characters in okay. one pack of cards. That's the great thing about this new format is the buttons that we used to sell this on were pretty expensive for sure. what they were. They were they were five numbers on a button. Right. And we sold them for like 250 Okay. And now you can buy the whole deck for 12 Nice. And that's got like 50 plus cards in it. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. All right. That's Button Men. I love it. 
This is gonna go fast, I think. I agree. Yeah. The license alone is is a, is a is a get. So. And the cool thing is, this is actually a set that McKinnon did about fifteen or twenty years ago. Wow. Okay. Uh, not exactly the same characters, but very mm. similar, similar mechanics and everything. And he reacquired the license to do this edition, right. almost simultaneous with our new edition of Button Men too. So it was really good timing. Absolutely. And it's a great looking set. And this is available at your booth this weekend. It is indeed. And how much is that going for? I think it's thirty-five. Okay, perfect. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's how it's much. It's in that range. It's in that range. Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. All right. What's some other fun things you've brought? This is Rochi. I want to show you Rochi. Okay. Um, this is a gambling game that was invented for a novel. Okay. So if you remember Tack. I do remember Tack. Tack is described in The Name of the Wind. It's mm -hmm. a, it's, it's the Patrick Rothfuss talks about this sort of chess-like, go-like game, but mm -hmm. doesn't give any of the rules because he didn't have any of the rules. And sure. years later, we worked together and actually made it real. Well, Sonia Lyris is a friend of mine, and she's a novelist, and she's writing the sequel to her book, The Seer, which is about a girl who can see the future. She wanted to put a gambling game in book two, okay. and I said, let's write that before you write the book. And then when you describe it, you can talk about the rules. And right. she's like, yes, let's do that. So this is a gambling game from a, a fantasy world. Okay. Um, it was sort of invented so that a, a prognosticator could, could beat it, which is pretty much any gambling game. Sure. Um, but the deck is sort of like a tarot deck. And what I have here is a playtest deck. This is nothing like the final art. Okay. The final art is like a tarot deck in that every card has a beautiful beautiful different illustration on it okay so it's not just like the major arcana it's an entire so set of uh this this uh this suit the seven suit actually has 14 cards in it okay and this one's called wine so there'll be a picture of wine or whatever the <coughs> tarot sure. card you know embodiment of that idea is here's the drum here's the purse here's aftermath here's the messenger every one of these is a different card okay the way the game is built is each suit has a different number of cards in it so this is the commons suit Mm -hmm. It has a number seven on it, Okay. but there's actually 14 cards in that suit. All right. And that's true all the way down. So this is the kin suit. It has a six on it that tells you there's 12 cards in that suit. Um, Aftermath is in the valor suit. That's a five. So there's 10 okay. cards in that suit all the way down to the mages suit, which has a two on it. And there's four cards in that okay. suit. Um, it's a gambling game where we're betting on which suit is going to cut first. And the definition of cutting is sort of the key of the game. So I'm going to show you how that works. Okay. Uh, and I won't go into a lot of detail about the betting, but this is the core mechanic of the game and of a few other games that we also wrote with this deck. Okay. Cutting is this. You deal cards off the deck until one of the suits is half exhausted. And that's why the number on the card mm -hmm. is half the size of the suit. Because right. now it's starting to make sense. As soon as there's four fours, right. that's the suit that cut. Uh, or if there's six sixes, or whichever suit has N of its card come out, Oof. if you had bet on the fours, fours to cut, that's the suit that wins. Everyone who bet on the other numbers would lose, and their money would go to you because you bet on the fours. Okay. Uh, something else about this game is that there's a day and a night half. So there's actually the, the dark borders in this suit are mm -hmm. the night cards. Okay. So there's four night fours, and there's four day fours. Uh, in some of the other games, you can bet on very specific combinations of those cards to come out and win oh, even wow. more money. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So so that's that's the deck, and that's how it works. That's pretty fun. Uh, this is being published by Campaign Coins. Oh, nice. Uh, it's They're starting to circulate the first illustrations for it now, and okay. they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they're going to kickstart it when most of that art is done sure. because they don't want to, you know, okay. no, they don't want to be wonder when it's going to get done. Right. Uh, but that's going to happen sometime this year, I think, and mm -hmm. we're pretty excited about it. And I'm running some demos mm -hmm. of this game at the show. Nice. I, I, I'm hearing some cheering coming out from uh, from the the football stadium. I wonder if they're excited as well. Let's see what's going on down there real quick. There it is. Look at that. Uh, Johnny was concerned because there's a lot of empty space down there, but uh, you had said that just that just is uh, more possibilities. Right? Is that what you said? <laughs> that the, the, the empty space just means more possibilities. Uh, but, yeah, there's gaming going on within the stadium here, uh, not just in the convention center, which is so, super cool. Uh, I, this, it's, it's an amazing event. So what, besides Roshi now. We should talk about the elephant in the room. Uh -huh, there is an elephant in the right? room. This is another game that I'm not publishing. You see the basic thread here? Yeah. Games I'm involved with, but I'm right. not publishing right now. Um, 
This is my travel copy, obviously, mm -hmm. of of uh, of this game. But uh, there we go. Um, that's nothing like what it's going to look like. It's a Lego box oh. with Dagron scroll scrolled on the front. Mm -hmm. This is the Trogdor board game. Trogdor board Trogdor, game. Trogdor, if you're familiar with Homestar Runner and Trogdor and all the great cartoons of 15 years ago. Right. Um, those folks came to me with a game design and said, let's work on this together. Okay. And let's bring it out. And it's actually in the very middle of a Kickstarter campaign right now. Which is ridiculous. Uh, it, I mean, is, it is, it is it definitely doing amazingly well. Yeah. I can't take credit for any of that, but I did help them with the design. Okay. Um, and the basics of the game is... I'm not going to lay it out, but basics of the game is that there is a map that's made out of 25 cards like this. Some of okay. them are simple, like the one with flowers on it. Some of them have mountains or mm. cottages or whatever. Okay. One of them has a lake. Uh, and they are, on the flip side, burnt. Oh. We are <laughs> all uh, the keepers of Trogdor. Okay. We are all controlling the Burninator, the one-armed dragon Trogdor, who's in here somewhere. Where is he? Where is this boy? We take turns. It's a, it's a cooperative game in the sense that we're taking turns controlling Trogdor. <laughs> the one-armed dragon. Moving him around the board, and he is burninating the countryside. And in fact, to win the game, Trogdor must burninate all the countryside, all the peasants, and all the thatched roof cottages. Okay. This is, this is very early prototype stuff, because I've, I've only ever had one copy of this game. But the basic idea with the cottage is that it starts like this, and when you burninate it, it gets a little flame on oh, top nice. like that. Uh, the peasants also have a little flame they can wear when they are set on fire. They run around setting things on fire oh and before they expire themselves. Unless they run into the lake. We just added this rule that if a peasant okay. runs into the lake, he's fine. Oh, he's, he's fine. He's, he shakes He'll be it right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so, yeah, the Kickstarter is running now. The game rules are more or less solid. In fact, I just sent um, a mm. copy, uh, a sort of redrafted rule book to, to the Chaps brothers last okay. week so they can put out a beta sort of during the campaign. Nice. Uh, it's quite simple. It's very fast and, and very fun. You, the, 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 the peasants that run around the board are also Trogdor's health. So every time you uh, eat one of them, you get some health back. Okay. Uh, every time you take damage from the knights who run around the board trying to defend the world, uh, you'll, you'll lose those peasants from your health bar permanently. And that's kind of the one-way arrow of the game. Sure. That's the timer that says eventually you will die if you don't do this right. Okay. You don't really die, of course. You just leave. But, right. uh, but before you do that, if Trogger loses all of his health, he, he gets a little mad. He does a little rampage where he draws five movement cards and just burns everything that he runs wow. past. So you can still win on that, that last gasp. Sure. <laughs> that's hilarious. Trogdor, the one-armed dragon. And if, I just love the fact that it's literally uh, just a big old muscle arm on his back. Yeah, so good. you should t definitely check out the the campaign page for the artwork of the mm -hmm. new models. This was uh, this was something they threw together for playtest, and and I yeah. don't, uh, I never update these components sure. during playtest. So this is the game I've been playing with for months now. But uh, and if you guys want to check it out, it's still going on the Kickstarter. Yeah, at the very moment, it's exactly halfway through. Okay, uh, they are they just passed nine hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Whew. Those guys weren't sure if they still had a big market, and everyone mm. else was like, "Yes, you do." And they were like, "Well, we'll see." We'll see. And they're and now they're kind of like, "Crap!" <laughs> they're <laughs> surprised by their success. Good. That's right. That's I good. Good I would them. not wish anyone their first mm. campaign to be a million dollar campaign because sure. it is quite a headache. Yeah, and also uh, the follow up to that is going to be you know th there's going to be expectations. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but they're doing great, and Good. it's going to be uh, fantastic. And I, I am happy to have contributed at least a small part. So to you're the contributing design. to a lot of things right now. I am. It looks like you got your hands in a lot of different game designs. Oh. And uh, is, is this something that uh, we will be seeing more from James? I am trying to restructure my life so that I do more design work and less of all the rest. Okay. So I run cheap ass games right now. Right. Um, but uh, we're looking at a partner to take over a lot of that uh, before the end of the year. Okay. And what that basically means is. What I've done with Cheap Ass during what I call phase three, like the last five years of the company, right. I've done some new releases, but primarily I've been taking the best of the first generation games and making deluxe versions of them. Okay. And someone else could be doing that. Sure. Right. And there's a huge catalog. There's still a hundred games with two or three good ones still in there. And <laughs> and there's someone, more than two or three. someone could probably do an even better job of doing that than I am. And so that's we're finding someone to do that, to okay. look back at games like Brawl and Fightball and Dice sure. Land and r really like titles that never got a, a good shot okay. um, and market them better than I would. And in fact, I think uh, a, a company with better reach and, and bigger staffing and their own warehouse and all those things that I don't ever want right. uh, will do a better job selling TAC as well. That's a game mm, that still sure. needs to be just leveraged like crazy. So, um, so we're finding friends to do that. 
Good. And what that means for my life is I can do more sort of freelance and consulting work like this, but mm-hmm. I can also just do more designs. Back from phase one, when I just did whatever I want. Right. Um, games like, I want to do a game called Too Many Notes. Okay. That's about trying to become the court composer in Salzburg or murder your rival, whichever, you know, yeah, whatever whichever comes yeah, first. Perfect. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but I can sell 20 <laughs> copies of that, so it never makes the top of my right. of my wish list as at, on my at my current job. Right. Uh, but in phase four, it just might. It just might. Yeah. And I look forward to this because <laughs> every time you bring up something, it is always, you know, engaging. And I want to see more games cool. by James. And uh, that's what I want too. All right. Very cool. cool. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Everybody out there watching, we appreciate your time and uh, all the fun that you bring to the table at our table. And uh, we look forward to seeing you as I do. I am Rick at the Game Store. watching Game Trade Media. Make sure to leave us a like and click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new content.